Hello and welcome to the Crochet Circle podcast. This is episode 34. It's called Sock Season. I'm Faye and this is my monthly podcast. It comes out on the first Friday of every month, usually at about 10am, if not a little bit sooner. And it's a podcast all about crochet with a little bit of knitting on the side. I do both, but crochet is my dominant sport. Um, I have an online craft shop, which is called Knit It, Hook It, Craft It. And I'm also a crochet and knitwear designer. Still feels a bit weird saying that. I can't believe that that's part of my job, but it is. I need to just kind of get with the programme and understand that that is quite a large part of my job and what I do on a day-to-day basis. Hello, my name is Faye and I'm a crochet and knitwear designer. <laughs> Hello, my name is Faye and I... I'm a crochet and knitwear designer. It's getting there. It's it's sinking in. I'm, I'm kind of starting to accept that that is what I do. And I also do this podcast, which comes out both on audio, which you can get on um, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes and any of the other um, podcast services that pick up whatever is migrated out there. And it's also on YouTube as a video podcast. And the two things, basically what happens is I split out the audio. Um, so that's where the audio file comes from. And I strip out some of the <laughs> the stupid bits of me at the end and my like dancing and shenanigans. Um, because it does, just, it does not translate to audio, all of that. So I strip that bit out, which is why sometimes the audio file is a little bit smaller than the YouTube file. But... Um, I know that lots of you still like to listen on audio and hello to you. So I always try and um, be really quite descriptive with my words and my techniques. So for those of you that are listening on audio as a proper audio podcast, you still get a flavour of what it is I'm showing as a video podcast. So I always try really hard to do that and to take lots of different photos and pop them into the show notes which has all of the links to the patterns the yarns everything that i talk about on a monthly basis and they're available at the crochetcircle.podbean.com there's a bit of a resurgence going on with them um, audio podcasts as well i listen to lots matthew and i both do and it's a really nice format i love listening to bits and pieces in the car so it's nice to see that those numbers are sustained and um, growing, actually, because it's it's just another way of taking in information. And if you want to know more about the techniques and what I'm talking about, then you can revert to the YouTube video. But yeah, I will always keep on going out on audio, too. So let's tell you about the Sock Along. Um, it's going to start on Saturday the 29th of September and it's going to run right the way through until the 31st of October. You can join in with crocheted or knitted socks but the vast majority of the information that's going to be passed over to you in in um, kind of blogs and within the Ravelry thread is all going to be about crocheted socks. So I'm not going to do any work on knitted socks and nobody, nor is anybody else. But if you want to enter with your knitted socks, go ahead. I'm just happy to have people crafting, frankly. We have got designers, podcasts and yarn dyers are involved in this crochet along. And I'm ever so grateful to them because their input is going to make a much richer crochet along. And it also means I don't have to do all of the work. I'm really struggling with time at the moment. So it's... It's been massively helpful for all of the people that are being involved doing what it is that they're doing and I'm really, really grateful to them. Um, Tamara, who you've heard me reference before, she uh, has got her own blog and she does an audio podcast of her blog. She's actually sorting out the blog hop for us. Thank you, Tamara. Um, I kind of cornered her a bit at the wool show I was doing last last week and said, feel free to tell me to pee off, but do you think you could? <laughs> Go away and think about it and then come back. And apparently I'm very persuasive. <laughs> so um, Tamara is busy behind the scenes sorting out a really good blog hop for us. She's going to kick that off on the 15th of September with her blog, which is all on hints and tips for crochet and socks. She's delivered workshops on um, crocheted socks before. She's fantastic. She's a great amount of knowledge. And she's also heavily involved in the sock thread 
that is always running on Claudia Crochi Luna podcast Ravelry group as well. So she's a great person to have on board for this Cal. The week after that is the 22nd of October and uh, that will then be my blog post. I'll be doing the blog hop for that and it's all about choosing the right yarn for crocheting socks. Um, I have crocheted quite a few pairs of socks in my time. I have frogged quite a few pairs of socks in my time and I have worn them um, to try and ascertain what I thought were the best socks and which weren't. So I'm going to pull together all of that information into a really decent blog post for um, what I think is good crocheted shot sock yarn. And I will also pinpoint you to some um, yarn brands I think you might like and that are suitable and have suitable sock yarn for you. And then there will be other blog posts every Saturday after that, commencing um, you know, with the Cal. So tomorrow the 15th, May the 22nd, Cal starts on the 29th and there will be another blog post on that date more details will be released um, as and when tomorrow is behind the scenes as we speak sorting out all of that blog hop um what else do we have going on there will be chatter threads in ravelry and they will be in claudia crochet luna's um podcast group it makes sense to house it there because there's already such a wealth of information within that group there may end up being different chatter threads depending on which I don't know what a chatter shed is. Sorry. <laughs> there may be different chatter threads <laughs> um, depending on um, different sock designs that's yet to be worked out or it might just be one big thread. Equally, there will also be a finished objects thread and Catherine from the Crafter Noon Treats podcast is hosting that thread. So finished objects can go there. I'll be heading up all of the Instagram information and the hashtag that we'll be using on Instagram is hashtag sock along 2018. Note the 2018 because if this cal goes really well then there will be a hashtag sock along 2019, 2020, 2021. So if we get a really good response to this cal then I will be keeping it up going into um, next year as it'll become an annual thing. Um, what else have we got? I'll be on Instagram doing that and also you can post your finished objects on Instagram as well as Ravelry for a double chance to win. There will be prizes to be announced and if you want to enter your socks and as a finished object on Instagram then you use the same hashtag and you add FO on the end so it will be sockalong 2018 FO. I think that's about all you need to know for now. More details will be coming out. I will have an overall posting in my Ravelry thread that will pinpoint you to all of the other sources and all of the other bits of information that you need. The Akal officially starts on the 29th of September. And like I say, we've got those couple of blog posts coming out two weeks and then one week before the Cal starts, getting you prepared so that you know what it is that you're looking for in a pattern and you know what kind of sock yarn you should be looking for. So... I'm really excited about this, Cal. We, there's a lot of time and effort that's going into it with a lot of people. Um, so yeah, I'm, I can't wait to get this one kicked off. And I'm also hoping that come the end of September, my crazy little life will have calmed down a bit and I will have a bit more breathing space to spend on stuff like this. Fingers crossed. Right, Cal done. Over the last few months, I have um, I've been getting to know Katie at Blacker Yarns. She's so, so lovely. Um, I first met her at Wonderful Wales. She came onto my stand and we had a lovely chat. And um, since then, I've helped her to find um, Tess Crocheters for some of the things that they've got going on. And we've just got a really lovely friendship growing, which is great. I've not done an awful lot with black yarns in the past and what I mean by that is I've not used a lot of their yarns. I've used bits and pieces for um, breed specific projects because that's one of the things that black yarn does particularly well. And um, Katie asked whether I wanted to review their latest birthday yarn. It's basically their 13th birthday yarn and it's called Tor and it's really beautiful. It's an iron weight yarn. And let me just read you some of the information on it. 
It says the fibre for this yarn is mainly sourced from our neighbouring co um, county of Devon, from flocks that specialise in crossbreeding to obtain the finest fibres. Tor contains 55% Romney Cross from the south of Devon, and I, I love a bit of Romney these days, um, and 28% of the softest Merino Cross from the north. We added just 5% of North Ronaldsey, another of my favourites, and 4% Shetland to enhance the woolly character, and 8% British alpaca to contribute colour and softness. The resulting yarn is a plump two-ply aran, bouncy and warm, with a gorgeous halo of alpaca and North Ronaldsey fibres. Tor is perfectly suited to warm garments and accessories and comes in one natural grey shade along with five complementary dyed colours inspired by our local moors. Now, um, 100 grams comes out at 200 metres and it is exactly what it says. It's a really plump um, yarn. And when Katie asked whether I would like to review it, I said yes, any chance, or would you mind if I asked a listener and watcher to review it with me. And so what Katie did was sent me six mini skeins and I sent three of those off to Jo. I let her choose which colour she wanted. And Jo is at Feather and Threads on Instagram. And of course, Jo cho chose the green and the dark grey, which they are called Rundlestone, um, Carnal Gloss and Leaden. And I sent these off to Jo and she's already sent me through a really wonderful review on what she thought. She's made a small hot water bottle case. I think there was just enough yarn to do it. Between We each have about 60 grams of yarn um, and I'll show you what I've been up to with it. But I have got Sheep Store, which is the undyed, which is a really beautiful heathered grey colour, light grey. Not dissimilar to the North Ronaldsey. Um, yarn that I got last month. I also have Cornbury, which is a plummy purple colour, and Llanlavery, which is a kind of a mid dusky rose pink colour. Um, so I've been having a little play with those, but given that I am holding up three balls of yarn, <laughs> you can see that I don't actually have a finished object with these. So luckily. Jo had done a proper yarn review. I can pitch in with bits and, bits and pieces that I have done um, and I can also talk about why it is that I haven't managed to fully review this yarn yet. Um, so let me start with what Jo had to say. Um, she says that the yarn feels bouncy and substantial. It has the kind of plump texture that makes you want to squeeze it. It also has a softness too, which I wondered might be from the alpaca content. And I reckon it probably is the alpaca, but also the merino Romney is soft. And I don't think you can underestimate actually how beautiful and soft North Ronalds is as well as a as a breed. Um, there's also a slight halo and the occasional stray alpaca here, but I wouldn't say it was particularly scratchy. What Jo goes on to say is that she's a bit, you know, she's like me. She she can take most yarns um, directly on her skin. So if you're a softy soft person and you are very much down the merino line, then this may not be the yarn for you. But if you like something that's got a bit more character to it and you don't mind feeling those fibres, then this is a really interesting one to um, to work with. Um, she wound the yarn into balls um, and she said it was a very tactile experience. There was definitely a softness there and almost a silkiness. And yeah, I would agree with that. It's beautiful that it comes in this um, two-ply as well. I think that's one of the things that is adding to the plumpness of this yarn. And it's got a fair amount of boing to it. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. You can see some. I can see some guard hairs come off as well, but you know when you get some yarns and there's just there's no real stretch to them. You can't um, you can't get any elasticity out of them, and that's not the case with Tor. Um, she said she decided to make a cover for a mini hot water bottle. 
50 grams was just enough yarn for the project that size and it felt very comfortable to crochet with. There was a, a satisfying smoothness to the yarn as it passed through her fingers. She um, used quite a textural stitch pattern and the definition of the stitches is very clear. I would agree with that. I'm going to pop photos um, that Jo has provided me into the show notes and I'll pop them up for the video as well. What she made is beautiful and you really can see that stitch definition from it. Um, she thinks that the yarn would work well with other textures or crocheted cables and as well as the gentle smoothness there is also a slight toothiness um, which would work well for colour work. Um, and I, I agree with that. What, what Jo means by toothiness is that you have got um, the halo and the hairs are coming off it. It's not a really smooth yarn. And so when you're working with colour work and you've got two strands, those fibres kind of mesh together. And that is what makes colour work really come together. It's one of the factors that really makes colour work come together because the stitches don't want to move. Once you washed and blocked it, they stay there and they plump up and they just allow your colour work to be really, really prominent. One isn't hiding from the other and they just kind of work in perfect harmony together. But it's that toothiness that makes them bed in together and stick and make your colour work present really nicely. You can do colour work with all other sorts of yarn as well. But that toothiness really helps and comes into its own if you stick the project, which is where you work in the round and then you cut it. More on that later. Um, so she said she had to rip back and start again a couple of times during the making of this project. And the yarn held up really well to that. She's worked with other two-ply yarns where the strands have come away from each other. Um, from overhandling, but this yarn really stood up well to it um, and re-crocheted re beautifully. Yes. Um, this is a really wonderful yarn and it was a pleasure to work with. She says she can see the potential for some warm winter accessories, mittens or perhaps a hat. Um, and I couldn't agree more. The One of the reasons that I um, haven't got on particularly far with mine is because I wanted to do a pair of slip stitch mittens and it is by no means the fault of the yarn but I just cannot get gauge um, with the pattern so I would end up with a mitten that was like maybe 30 centimetres long which wasn't what I was after but I haven't ripped it back because I wanted to be able to show off how beautifully the yarn works with something like slip stitch crochet and it's gorgeous I would just be tempted to go up a few sizes, but it's not going to work for this pattern, even though it called for um, a yarn of this weight. It's just not going to work. But like I say, that's not the yarn. That, I think, is more down to the pattern. So I need to go back to the um, back to the drawing board and find a project for this. I've got just shy of 60 grams to use, and I have three colours. Um, so I'm going to come up with something... And one of the things I always look for in a more woolly wool, especially when it's got something that is a two ply, it can become a bit of a pain when you're crocheting because the hook can go through the ply and it can be so toothy that that in itself gets caught up in your hook. And I didn't find that to be the case at all with this yarn. It presents itself really nicely onto your hook. I always use an aluminium straight hook as well. Um, I'm not sure it would be as good on, on a wooden hook or a bamboo hook, but it worked really nicely on a, on a metal hook. And given that I was doing something as tight as slip stitch crochet, and it does have some give to it, you know, there's some boing, um, I just didn't have any problems with the fibres getting knotted around the hook, which I can with other fibres, in particular my um, my lovely Alifos. My um my low pay can be like that at times on a crochet hook. Um, but absolutely none of that with the tour. And the colours are really beautifully heathered, which is one of the things we were talking about. They'd used alpaca in part for the colour. And I'm guessing it's been a darker alpaca um, because there is just this heathering that comes forward in the yarn. 
so it doesn't look like it's just one colour. You've actually got some depth within there as well. And it smells woolly, <laughs> which is always the acid test. How does your yarn actually smell? I'll pop photos up in the show notes so you can see all of the colours. And it is available for all blacker yarns. If you're in America, Canada, then Claire at the Woolly Thistle has already got this in stock. She's on it, I tell you. The minute a UK company is coming out with a new yarn, Claire is there ordering it. She's she's really good at getting British yarn and British breeds over into the US. So Tor is already available on her website. Moving on to Final Destination. Uh, I don't have... <laughs> I've done stuff, but most of it isn't here, which, you know, that was one of the reasons that I changed it to Final Destination, because it wasn't just about the making, it was also about the giving and telling you where stuff has ended up. So one of the things that I finished this month was another loft. Oh, what a surprise! <laughs> um, and it's the crocheted DK version. So I'd already made one for myself, and I, I had to make one for the John Arban stand. So if you go onto their stand at all, um, you should see it's the claret colours. It's really beautiful, actually. Um, Juliet chose the colours and I was a bit jealous that I hadn't chosen those colours for my version. But um, yeah, so that will that will be on their stand. I'll pop some pictures in and pop some into the show notes. But I really liked that that um, bringing together of colours are beautiful. When I was in Northern Ireland, I went and saw Louise's shop, which is called Lighthouse Yarns. Louise is the lady that runs Yarn Folk, the festival that I'd gone over to vend at. And um, on the shelves up at the top, she had just like cone after cone after cone of linen, and it was Irish linen. Now, to my knowledge, there are there's no linen spun in Ireland anymore. I couldn't find any details of anywhere that was still spinning linen and um, certainly not in Northern Ireland and so this is nice vintage linen and Louise gave me a cone of it um, and it's a real TARDIS blue colour, it's really nice. And so what I did was held it double because it's, it's really quite thin, I suspect it's kind of probably somewhere between six to seven hundred meters per hundred grams so going towards a heavy lace weight um and i doubled it up and i made market bank with it and the pattern that i followed was rosina's which is the zines and rogers market bank links are in the show notes and i'll pop some photos up of it as well but it looked really good it was a lovely project it's quite a repetitive project and you can do it very quickly doesn't require a lot of concentration so it's probably quite a useful on the go project as well the linen was quite um it was quite hard to work with there's very little give with it i think it was a wet spun linen and um you you knew it was running through your fingers for sure i had to have a break from the saturday night and then picked it back up again on the sunday afternoon um, but the recipient was very pleased with their market bag, especially given that it was made with Irish linen. Um, yeah, so that was another quick finished object. And market bags seem to be all over the place at the moment. There's Rosina's one, and there's also one by somebody who's on Instagram called Two of Wands. And that's another really popular market bag that's doing the rounds at the moment. So... If you fancy trying one, they're the two patterns that seem to be most prominent. And what else did I do? This one isn't strictly an FO, but I've nearly finished the second one and I figured if I show it to you now, then you don't need to see it next month and I can actually wear them because if I make socks, I generally try to keep them good until I've shown them off on the podcast. So by showing you this one and talking about it, I can then finish the other one off while I'm editing the podcast. It's often one of my favourite projects to do because I can easily knit on a sock whilst I'm editing and, and playing back the audio and the video files. And this is, do you remember my Dirty Tiger <laughs> yarn? I got this from You and Ply, some of their hand-dyed. 
Um, that's the shop in Shrewsbury and it's available online. I've put links into the show notes already for this. And it's actually called Alley Cat, but I really do think it should be renamed Dirty Tiger because it's on a base of light grey and then it has all the tiger colours coming through it, but it's like the tiger's been rolling about in charcoal. And I've paired that up with contrast toes and heels, which are in West Yorkshire Spinner's signature four ply in the colourway Poppy Seed, which is a mid brown and just goes really nicely with the tiger look. If I'd have had a burnt orange uh, coloured contrast that I could have done, I would have done it, but the grey was the closest that I could get to it. So I'm kind of, I'm on the sole part already of my second sock. So, like I say, by the time I'm actually pressing send um, on this podcast and putting it up to YouTube, these socks will probably be on my feet already. I love them. Love them, love them. My dad was down at the weekend and he he's now accepting of the fact that handmade socks might be the future. And then I said, well, would you want a pair like this? And he was like, no. <laughs> Uh, no thanks. Can you, can I just have some plain ones, please? Eventually I'll get him into the jazzy ones, but for now, the fact that he's willing to take knitted socks is like a massive step forward. But yeah, I've got a pair of dirty tigers to put on my feet by the end of this week. Very chuffed with them. And that's been it. On the finished objects front, three little things. It doesn't feel like a lot. Um. But it is, you know, in the midst of everything else that's going on in my life, actually. Oh, yeah. See, this is why. I, I just forget everything else that's going on. I have a design in progress, which will be finished off tonight. And I have another design, which I'm not going to show you until the next podcast, the Crocheted Shawl, um, which I started and finished and wrote the pattern up inside of a week. It was one of those that just went pew, straight out of my brain onto the hook onto paper and off to be tech edited um so yeah i have actually been busy i do have more finished objects than one almost finished object i'm just very good at beating myself up for not thinking that i've done enough for the podcast which is not the way it should be right i think i'm allowed a cup of tea now i'm gonna move on to on routes because i <laughs> I've got nothing to say really here other than time is just really against me at the moment. My um my Verity V neck top has not moved forward and I feel awful about it. It sat there in a project bag and I desperately want to get to it and I've just had design deadlines and show deadlines. So I've had two shows in the last like thirty one days. Which and they are just all consuming because you've got all of the prep work beforehand, then getting to the show itself and you just work and work and work and work and work and then you stop <laughs> and you collapse in a heap and that's what it's like doing a show. So I've had very little personal crochet time which is very frustrating but I love doing the other stuff as well. Just can somebody please invent more hours in the day? That would just sort me right out. If I could survive on less sleep and there were like 30 hours in a day, that's all I want. Just an extra six. I don't think that's too much to ask for. So if one of you can sort that, that would be great. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've got very little in on route. Certainly nothing that I can show you that says, ta-da, look at all of this extra stuff that I've done to this project. Because I haven't. So let's gloss over that and move you into designs in progress. <laughs> I said earlier that I have a shawl that I started, finished and, you know, had it already inside of a week. That is called Aria and it is using the mermaid yarn that I bought at um, Yarningham from Becky and Marcus at Rivernet. Sometimes you create a project and it just comes instantly and... It's off the hook before you even breathe, <laughs> before you've thought about it. It's there, the design is set and it's done. And that's probably happened to me maybe three times in all of the things that I've designed. And Aria is one of those things. I'm going to show you this shawl properly next month. But 
um, all of you lovely people that came forward and wanted to do test crochet for me and have signed off the non-disclosure agreement you're going to be getting emailed very shortly when I've got the first document back from Deb for tech editing then I will be emailing you out um, to see who wants to actually test out the shawl pattern for me that's going to be launched properly on the 2nd of November when I am vending at Yarnporium in Westminster in London, which is a huge, 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 huge deal. It's massive. Yarnporium is one of the kind of premier end yarn shows that we've got in the UK. It's kind of up there with Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And I'm vending at it. <laughs> excited um, so I'll be there as Knit It Who Could Craft It but I'll also be taking my patterns along which I'm kitting up as well and Aria will be launched at that show in both a, um, a crochet and a knit version I love it I took it to the Southern Wool show to give a few um, crochet clan members that were coming along a little sneak peek that was very well received so I'm I'm really confident about this pattern and the fact that it's going to be well received. Very excited about it and I just can't believe that I've worked on it. Oh, I've worked on it that quickly and that far in advance of the deadline but I really want to make an impact with it at your Emporium and it's quite a big market at your Emporium as well and I want, I want to properly represent crochet there and show how beautiful it can be and um, I feel like I've done it justice through this pattern and I'll be doing your Emporium justice and the Crochet Clan justice as well so <laughs> I'm really excited about it. <laughs> Can you tell? I'm a bit giddy kipper about it. But the other thing that I've been working on, let me get my project bag, is a design called Arete. Um, and it is using John Urban Textiles. <laughs> um, they have a yarn called Harvest Hues, which I've used before. Previously, I did a large lacy knitted shawl called Unkia, which was the bane of my life. I did it twice. I did it once in a Wensley deal. And the second time I did it, I did it for myself. And I did it in Harvest Hues in the colourway, which is called Blue Spruce. And it's lovely. It's 65% um, merino, so it's got that softness, and it is 35% Zwartblaze. Zwartblaze. <laughs> it's meant to be pronounced Zwartblaze, but other people you'll hear it refer to as Zwarbles. And that is a much darker wool. The fibre is much, much darker. And what that does when you mix it in with the dyed merino is it gives it that heathered textured effect. It's beautiful. So again, you get that depth of colour in the same way that I was talking about with the Blacker Yarns Tour. It just mixes it up a little. It doesn't give you that flat colour. It just gives layers and depth to it. Um, and so what I've started with with this design is started with the knitted one because that generally takes longer. The way that I tend to approach most of my designs is I'll come at it from a point of crochet and then convert it into knitting if I can. I know that I can convert this one into crochet and so I started with the knitted. And the concept is that it's all knitted in the round and the crocheted version will be crocheted in the round. So it will be a tapestry crochet version. And because it's then going to become a flat piece as a pashmina, it is going to be steaked, which means you cut it. You have to cut your work, which is going to scare the life out of me when I have to do it. But it will be fine. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Um, and what you do, and it will look much the same when I come to the crocheted version, is that you have a set of stitches, which are your steak stitches, which are not the same as the pattern, and I've done them in line so I know exactly what it is that I'm going to be sticking. And um, what I'm going to do is some tomfoolery with the knitted and the crocheted version where you do some um, slip stitches and crochet and that secures down your yarn and then when you cut the yarn doesn't want to run which it won't want to do anyway because whether you've knitted or crocheted it you're knitting 
lines are going in rounds so they are running horizontally. You are cutting vertically and because your knitting and crochet runs horizontally and you're cutting vertically, it shouldn't want to run. Now, do you remember when I was talking through Jules' yarn review, she was saying that um, it was toothy, so it would work really well for colour work. That's part of the deal with this yarn as well. So it's not overly smooth. It has got fibres. You can see halos coming off it. It's just really beautiful. And that, again, makes those two strands sit together and work together really well and want to stay together, which works brilliantly for the colour work and also really helps when it comes to sticking because they are not smooth so they don't want to just slide away from each other. The toothiness of the strands make them want to stick together. That's one of the things that makes sticking possible. If you've got a really toothy yarn like 100% um, Shetland, you can get away with not even putting the security stitches down it. You can just cut it and the yarn won't want to go anywhere because the fibres are sat there. And if that stick has been done for, let's say, um, armholes, um, then the action of moving about in that jumper or that um, sweater with the armholes means that it will felt together anyway. And um, if you've used the right wool and you don't even need to sew down the yarn ends from the stick that you've done. It's an incredible technique. It's not really one that I've um, used yet, so I figured I'd do it for this project. So Arete is going to be one massive, massive pashmina style scarf. It's so big I can barely get it into the camera frame. I'll try and take some photos of this. Um, but it's quite deep. I'm using four different colours in it. And the concept is that once I've steaked it and cut it up, you can either wear this as a big pashmina wrapped around you, um, or you can sew a button band onto it, which should mean that once I've washed and blocked it, you can double this over, button it up and have it as a really big, warm, chunky cowl. So out of one pattern, whether you've done the knit version or the crocheted version, you've got kind of at least three ways that you can actually wear this project so it's a really versatile piece um, and very very warm and the reason it's called a ret is because it has chevrons running across it and a ret is basically the top um, edge of a mountain and the chevrons are really quite nice and sharp on this and that's what it reminded me of and you know me geology <laughs> and nature always have to play a part in my designs. So this is a red and the colours I've chosen for the crocheted version are just much brighter than the knitted version. The knit has got that um, blue spruce colour that I was um, just mentioning. Um, one which is bramble which is a real kind of brambles colour. Thistle which is a mid slightly bright purple. Rose Bay, which is quite a dark, dusky rose colour, and that's all of the colours, and it runs up and down in these chevrons. And I'm really enjoying it, and I'm almost at the end. I reckon this will be finished off by tonight, tomorrow night, and then I'm going to be sticking, which I might, I might pop up live and do a little Instagram TV thing for it on my Faye DH Designs part on Instagram because my heart will be in my mouth when I have to actually cut this up and I want to record it for the video tutorial anyway. So um, yeah, this has been quite a major piece of work for me over the last um, last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's been about 10 days since I cast this on actually. So that is a red knitted and let me show you the colours for a red crocheted because they are beautiful. Oh. Harvest Hues is one of the sheepiest smelling wools I've ever worked with. Juliet sent it to me in two separate bags and the minute you opened up the bag you just had wafts of sheep. It was just incredible. Um, 
and the colours. I'm so chuffed with these colour choices. And I made a conscious effort this time to put the knitted version in more muted colours and pull out much brighter um, colours for the crocheted version so that it really popped out. And three of the colours I'm using are from the existing Harvest Hues range. And then the new one that I'm using is a really bright, bright, petrally blue, tealy blue, which is woad, which is one of the new colours. And that's one of the reasons I'm working with Harvest Hues, is because they've brought new colours out in the range. So woad, this bright, bright blue, is going to be the main colour. And then I am pairing that up with pomegranate. I think it's called Rust and Bracken. And they are just, oh, I mean, autumn is here and autumn is here in my arms in abundance in Harvest Hues. It's just, it's a very autumnal palette using, um, using the wood as something to really pull all of the colours together, but also make it bright and really vibrant. And I... This will be on the hook in about the next two days and I'm so excited to get onto this and see how the crocheted version works up. And I'm going to try and do a rib that reflects the chevrons as well. So the crochet rib might have a texture in it which also gives the chevron. That's what I would like to do. Whether I can actually make that happen or not is another is another factor. But that's, that's how where I would like the design to go. So excited for these autumnal colours. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's where my next design is at. That has to be finished for yarn deal, both of them. Patterns written and patterns printed and ready to go. So no sleep for me for the next two weeks till I get that done. <laughs> um, with video tutorials as well. Um, because the colours are going to yarn deal with John and Julia Arben. And ideally these patterns would be available on their stand. Um, ready to support the new yarn colours. I really love making life difficult for myself. I really do seem to enjoy it. I'll do it. Of course I will. I hate letting people down, so I'll be there. Even if I'm running up to them on the Saturday morning with the printed patterns, uh, they'll be there. <laughs> so if you want to know a bit more about this pattern and how it goes and how the crocheted one goes, now that they are launching these yarn colours, I can talk about them a bit more openly on Instagram. But that's why I've been so quiet about it. So if you're interested in seeing how that develops and progresses, go and catch me over on Fady H Designs. And if you want to see me with my heart in my mouth as I um, stick the knitted version, <laughs> then it will be up there and it will be on the YouTube video when I finish this pattern off. Yes. What that does mean is that come the October podcast, I should have both of those patterns out ready and um, with the usual kind of 50% discount that I give you guys as well if you're interested. Um, yeah. So, feeding the habit. Um, there isn't too much stuff. Because I went up into my stash and I was a little bit overwhelmed by it all. So I deliberately haven't been buying stuff at any of the yarn shows that I've been at. Um, but I still have stuff, obviously, because people are lovely and they send me things. And I get stuff through for review. And um, I still buy bits and pieces. So let's do this in the order of which I got them. When I was over at um, the Yarn Folk Festival at the beginning of August, I had such a ball. I, we had a couple of days off and we went and did the Antrim Coast and um, I finally got to Giants Causeway. <laughs> but, <laughs> do you remember I was saying I want to go to Giants Causeway, I want to take photos of me with my basalt shawl, um, because I just think that would be such a lovely thing to have. Um, John and Juliet were also vending at uh, Yarn Folk. <laughs> and it wasn't until the entire of my car and their van had been packed up that I went to Juliet and went, Basalt? And she was like, 
it's in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> right in the middle of the van. The pair of us had remembered the morning of the yarn festival and then by the late afternoon when we were doing takedown it was just like, get it in the van, get it all in there and get it done. And uh, yeah, so I didn't I didn't get to take Basil and go and um, take photos of it in Giant's Causeway, which is a shame, but there was no way I was going to say, any chance we can just unload the van, get a shawl out and then load it all back up again. So what this all means is that I have to go and vend at Yarn Folk again next year and because the lovely Jojo Twinkle Toes has now crocheted me up my own sample of basalt um, which I'm really grateful for I can now take that so I don't have to pester John and Juliet to get the original sample back but to make myself feel a little bit better that I didn't manage to do that I picked up some lovely 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 Studio Donegal Tweed yarn now this is not Irish wool it is merino and it it's that gorgeous kind of tweedy nept effect your um yarn and wool that you get um that comes out of Ireland. It's just gorgeous. So it's in a deep teal colour, no surprises there, and a light to mid blue colour which has got really amazing little kind of bright green nips in it. It's very it's like the sea with shards of glass in it, it's really gorgeous. And the tealy blue one has got bright blue nips in it. It's soft, but it's not so soft that it doesn't feel like an Irish yarn. And it, what it says is spun by Donegal Yarns. What I can't find out is if that means it's spun in Ireland or Donegal Yarns have it spun. So I can't exactly tell you the provenance of this. Clearly it's Merino, so... Um, it's not coming out of Ireland, but it is an Irish product in the sense that it's an Irish company. And the one that I went for is the, um, it's the DK weight. It's not actually, it's more like an add-in. It's 190 metres per 100 grams. And I'm looking to design something up with this. There may be, there may be some future project that this gets used for something quite exciting. I shall say no more. But, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to having a wee test of this and see how it goes. They've got all sorts of beautiful colours. Now, I got this from Louise at Lighthouse Yarns and she's got all sorts of gorgeous colours. She doesn't currently have a website that you can go and buy from, but I know that she's working on it. And if you're in and around um, that kind of Antrim coast of Northern Ireland, pop into Whitehead and go and see Louise. One, she's a total gem. She's just lovely. And two, she's got a really nice selection of yarns. Um, so yeah, pop in and see her. She's in the bank house. There's a little cafe next door. It's it's just a really nice location. And Whitehead is a good fun town. <laughs> I haven't yet recorded the second part of the summer shenanigans that is coming. I might record it on Thursday, then try and get it out next week. And in that, I will tell you all about potential bar fights, eat, eating chippies uh, in a pub, and uh, yeah, just general all the stuff that we got up to in Northern Ireland. It was it was it was good fun, and uh, yeah, me telling somebody off for being a sexist pig and just basically <laughs> going at him. It was uh, it was one of those good fun weekends where just anything goes. <laughs> right. So that was that one, and then I went to there's a localist yarn show to me which is a one day one and it's called the pop up wool show and it's over at Port Sunlight which is kind of Merseyside and one of the people that I definitely wanted to go and see when I got over there was um, a lady called Mary and her daughter Sean and Mary has a company that she's kind of she's been going for a while that was her first um like yarn show her company is called Marithdale and if you go onto Instagram her Instagram name is Clickety Knit. Um, I've put all of the details into the show notes. Now, what Mary does is she has her own Shetland sheep and she gets the fleeces and she hand spun um, she hand spins the fleeces. And what I particularly love about this one that I picked up is that she's told me which sheep it's come from. So this is an undyed um mid brown Shetland sheep fleece and it's come from her sheep called Clover. Uh, fantastic. I also think the pricing point was really good. It's 45 grams 
and it was £10. And this is something that is a natural yarn. They're from her sheep and she spun it herself. So the labour that has gone into this is just incredible. So then I also picked up as a little contrast colour. She had hand dyed some other um, wool that she had in a really dark... Do you know what's actually not that dissimilar to the the blue spruce colour that I've been working with in the Harvest Hues. And this is hand spun, hand dyed, 18 grams for £3.50. And it will do as a really nice contrast colour. Now I have never crocheted with um, hand spun before. I think I've done a little bit with my own like, really horrendous hand spun the, the first time I ever did any drop spindling. But I haven't done any more than that. I certainly haven't worked with something that somebody's done at a, a much more professional level. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting into that and seeing what it's like. It smells gorgeous. And just, you know, that provenance of knowing where it's come from and the life that the sheep has had is, it's really nice and I would pay money for that. Um, yeah. So I did, I paid more. <laughs> Um, so continuing on my hand spun journey, my friend Jo, um, she lives locally and she comes to Wool Gathering Sandbach. She has an Etsy shop which is Dancing Sheep Yarn and Jo took off in her camper van for a few days um, during the summer and went off around Scotland and I was given her kind of places that she could go and visit and go and see. And she took, she has a travelling um, wheel that she can take and so all the way around her trip to Scotland she was spinning on 100% British Polworth. I think it had been pre-dyed and so I have got 483 metres of a two-ply from Jo that I bought. I just loved the fact that she'd been spinning on this on her camper van um, all the way around her trip to Scotland and so when she put it up on Instagram I jumped on it straight away. So I now have three uh, lots of hand spun yarn to have a go at. And yeah, so Shetland and some British Polworth. Polworth is a lovely soft yarn. So if you're looking for something a little bit different to try, if you're maybe, you want to go beyond Merino, let's say, um, give Polworth a try and also give Romney a try because... I think that they're nice next go-to breeds. If you've done Merino and also if you've done Blueface Leicester, BFL, then you're looking for a new one to try. Polworth, um, Romney, and also give Corridale a try. So one of the new yarns that has come out recently, it's just started hitting the shops now, is a new one that Erica Knight has been working on. It's called Wild Wool. It's um, made in Italy and it comes in 100 gram skeins and it's a blend of wool and nettle. And I really like the mix of this um, this yarn. I haven't yet worked with it properly. I did a little bit with it just to see how it chained up but I haven't actually made anything with it so I have 100 grams that I'm going to work with but this just arrived and it's done as a single ply which I always really like um, crocheted single ply yarn you may remember I did the little cat blanket for Pomleroy um, which I did in the Alaforce Chunky and that's a single ply yarn and I love the way that the stitches look with the single ply yarn. The definition is always great and you can see almost every twist that you've put into it as you've crocheted with it. It's it's something that's really beautiful when you've crocheted. Um, and so I want to make something rather lovely with this yarn and test it out because I also have a design in mind that I would like to do with it. Um, and the nettle gives it this beautiful luster because the nettle tends to dye differently and often if you see a yarn like this the nettle will look almost silvery and almost like a silk that's been mixed through it um, so it does give you a really different take on the colour that it would normally be if it was just pure wool 
and it's soft and nettle is sustainable um, and it kind of doesn't really need chemicals to grow. I need to do a bit more digging on the production of nettle but from everything that I've read so far it's a really good fibre, it's very strong and like I say you get that silkiness and that luster from it. So the yarns that she brought out come in eight different colours. The one that I have is called Mooch. <laughs> and there's a silver grey, a bluey grey, a teal, a dark grey, a kind of greeny mustard, a forest green, the purple that I've got, which is Mooch, and a light rosy pink, which is called Doddle. And it's 170 metres per 100 grams. And she's suggesting you use a 5mm um, hook or needle with it. And it's hand wash only. Um, it says, spun from the fibre found inside the stem of the plant. Nettle has been used for 2,000 years for its strength and durability as a textile. Nettle is grown abundantly and perennially in rainy areas worldwide without the need for harmful, pollu harmful pollutants or pesticides, making it eco-friendly and sustainable. Blended with luxurious wool, the nettle enhances the character of this yarn, adding insulation and texture, which, contrary to its prickly persona, creates a sumptuously soft aran weight yarn in a palette of irresistible colours inspired by the wild. So, this has been an incoming, um, because I emailed Bella and said, any chance you can send me a skein for review? Um, so I will review this properly, but I actually really like the idea of crocheting up a new bag design in this. I've got the idea starting to rummage through my head um, as to what it might look like. And um, it, it might be one with like a shoulder strap, so a bigger bag than some of the ones I would normally make. Um, and maybe some slip stitch crochet texture in there because I think it would really lend itself to that. So watch this space. I'm going to review this yarn properly in its own right. And then when I know what I want to do with it, I will get more of it and actually design something up with it because it's just beautiful. And I suspect it's also going to be really quite hard wearing as well, which is what I want from a, from a bag. So more on that to follow. Lovely Mara, who's a crochet clan, um, did an article for an Australian yarn magazine called Yarn and she did an entire piece on slip stitch crochet and she looked at loads of different um, patterns and actually the one that I was testing out the blacker yarns tore on was one that I'd been pointed towards because of her article in this magazine. Um, I am currently in talks with the editor because I'd really like to grab the article and publish it and get it out there for crochet clan folk so that you can see what it is that Mara has said and you know in the same time highlight this magazine if you're over in Australia then I really enjoyed reading it. It's not just about knitting, yay! Um, it also covers um, crochet and weaving and all sorts of bits and pieces. Um, so. Mara was sending me this over because I'd said a couple of podcasts ago that I really wanted to um, learn more about slip stitch crochet and techniques. But she's naughty and she also sent me some um, some wool. She sent me over some um, Woolganic Knitter's yarn. It says good for sheep, good for the earth, good for you. And it's 100% certified organic Australian merino um, fleece wool. And I have got 100 grams in a dark charcoal grey. And I'm going to try again with those crocheted um, slip stitch mittens. But I'm going to try it with this yarn rather than the blacker. Um, and this is it's beautifully soft. It's got a really nice twist on it again, which lends itself to um, crochet. And um, it's just really lovely soft DK yarn. So thank you for that, Mara. I'm looking forward to this. And working it in conjunction with your pattern ideas for slip stitch crochet and learning new techniques as well. Um, thank you. And the final bits and pieces that were incoming for me, um, I got at the weekend. One of them I can't show you because they all got eaten, which were 
uh, really delicious brownies that Helen made and brought to the Southern Rule show. And I didn't get to them until the end of the show. I'd packed all of the car up and then I'd left the box to the... Um, to the side on the passenger seat and then I finally got to it and oh, there were loads in there I thought she'd like made me one or two brownies and there must have been 10, 12 brownies in there there was still a load of people that were still in the hall packing up and so I um, gave myself one and ate it like I didn't I inhaled it it just went <laughs> straight into my face um, and then I went and shared out the rest of them Oh my word, they were so thankful for being given chocolate brownies. Um, they were just over the moon, delighted to be getting some calories into them at the end of a long day. It was it was about six o'clock when I went and gave them a brownie and they were very, very grateful for it. And it saved me eating ten brownies on the way back up the road in the car, which I would I would do. If they're sat there, I will eat every last morsel of it. So thank you for them, Helen. And um, they were much appreciated by Nick and the team and some of the other vendors. They loved them. I also um, was given. Let me show you why. So I dropped my old phone over a year ago, and then I got a new phone about a month and a half ago. And inside of two weeks of getting my new phone, I dropped it again and completely busted the screen. Which isn't helpful when I'm trying to write stuff on Instagram or texts or, you know, trying to work out whether my photo looks good enough. And the reason that my phones generally get busted up is because I use them when I'm timing patterns and how much how long it takes me for a row. So I'll have lots of stuff in front of me and I've got to press... Um, go on the timer and stop on the timer and inevitably my phone falls over quite a lot. So lovely flick, Crochet Clan. <laughs> Love this. To get me over this, she's bought me a learning resources stopwatch, like a proper child's stopwatch for a five-year-old and up. <laughs> it's bright blue and purple and it's got big red, yellow and green buttons on the top of it so that I can use this instead of using my phone and I can properly time myself up in my patterns. So this is now an essential piece of my um, my design kit so that I can stop ruining all of my phones and uh, take proper photos with them and generally look after my stuff. Everything else of mine... I look after really well. I, you know, I understand the value of things, but for some reason my phones just get done in. I think they're very fragile items these days anyway, but um, thanks Flick for my very child friendly stopwatch. <laughs> and my final incoming was that at the Southern Mall show, I also got to meet um, Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful Podcasts. It's the first time she and I have ever met face to face and she gave me some of her dodgy yarn and there is absolutely nothing dodgy about it it's lovely so I've got two little um, mini skeins one of them of course has got yellow in it because it's Ali it has to have yellow on it and the other one is a very light um, kind of pale tealy kind of glacier set of colours so these are going to become contrast heels and toes in socks Thank you for that. I met so many people at the Southern Mall show. I just, I loved it. It was one of those locations where lots of people could get to and it was a really good one day show. And I was just like hugging people left, right and centre. There were so many people that um, came up to say hello. And I love that. I love meeting new people. I love that shared experience of crochet and crafting and the buzz and the feed that we get from each other it's really really nice and yeah it, it's it's nice to get the feedback that you appreciate the podcast that um and the the things that kept on coming back for from people was positivity and techniques the fact that you will talk about things in depth and that people learn from the podcast and there that's that's fantastic. That means that I'm doing what it is I set out to do, which is to have that shared learning experience, but to do it in a positive manner. I try to not be political. I try to not be ranty. 
um, you know, I try to keep it upbeat all the time. And so if that's what's coming across to you guys on audio and on the screen, then fantastic. Because it means I'm doing what it is I set out to do. Um, and that we've got that set it, that sense of community through the Crochet Clan. I just I love it. Thank you. And thank you for coming to see here. Hello and keeping it going throughout the day. It's really good. Although I have to say, I felt sorry for Helen who came to see me because... Um, the stand next door were being a bit naughty and every time Helen came to see me they were being really naughty and I was just I was grumbling at her I was like look at what they're doing that's just not acceptable look at what they're doing and she was like calm down so I was being a bit of a grumpy mare but I was very tired I was really really tired come the end of that um come the end of the show <laughs> I got back in my box it was okay right I think that's everything that I have as a uh, Feeding habit feels like quite a lot again. Yeah, I'm not going to buy anything at your deal. Do you think that's possible? I'm not sure. We'll see. Yeah, maybe I don't. I don't really need anything. Let's see. I may come away from your deal with nothing. It's unlikely, really, isn't it? Okay. On to quick news bits. I've got. Two global hookups for you. The next one is going to be on Saturday the 15th of September at 8.30pm. And then another one on the Sunday morning, which is Sunday the 16th of September at 9am. And I'm just going to keep on going for as long as I can with the double. That's what I'll do. That way I can hit Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere. And hopefully it just suits um, everybody and they can come and crochet along or knit along or do whatever they want so big up it's just a quick one to say thank you to everybody that's helping out with the sock cal so um tamara claudia um catherine and caroline in particular but for just bringing your own flavor and um making it shape up into a really nice cal it's hugely appreciated and uh, yeah to everybody that's going to be joining in I'm really looking forward to that one. And then finally, Jador. Um, I have got a new song which I've been playing on repeat and driving Matthew absolutely bonkers with. It's a remix and the original song is by a group called Rusted Roots. Some of you will remember this. It was in Ice Age, the film. And um, there's a dance remix of it by a guy called Jesse Block and I just coming across all of his um, bootleg remixes on YouTube. There are quite a few of them. He's brilliant. Um, so that has been on, like, repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, we've also gone back and started watching, well, we've nearly finished it, actually, Green Wing. Some of you will know Green Wing. It was a Channel 4 production. Um, some of you from overseas will not have a clue as to what it is that I'm talking about. But if you don't mind a bit of swearing and you want proper, silly, stupid British humour, I just don't think you can get better than Green Wing. It's set in a hospital, but it's not ve it's not very hospital. You're not seeing lots of... It's not really about injuries and stuff. It's, it's about the people within the hospital and their working relationships. And it is quirky and really, really funny. And I love it. I don't know how many times we've watched Green Wing but it probably has been about four years since we last watched it and it it does well to be watched every few years. It's just really good fun and we've nearly finished that already. Love it. And my final jador is autumn. Have you noticed for all of you that live in and around kind of Europe and the Northern Hemisphere, trees are starting to change, all the autumn colours are out um, I'm still able to sit outside for a little bit when the temperature's up a bit um, with our umbrella out and sometimes a blanket. Um, but I'm so looking forward to more autumn colours, log fires and soup and just all the autumnness that can happen. I just, I, I love it. I'm a real home bird. I like going out and doing things, but I love nothing more than sitting with a pot of tea and being in our house and just having the cat on my lap and being able to sit and craft and it makes me so happy. I like it when it's crisp, 
but do you know when it's raining and you feel justified in being in the house? <laughs> That's what I love. Love it, love it, love it. And whilst I've enjoyed the heat of the summer, it's been too much for me. <laughs> I'm definitely a kind of autumn, winter, spring girl. I could live without the summer. If you allowed me to go and live in Alaska or Iceland, I think I would be there with bells on. Or Canada. Oh, I'd go to Canada. I'd go and live in Canada. Yeah. And blankets. Autumn's also all about blankets. Right. I'm going to stop sniffing sheepiness. And I am going to go. Thank you very much for spending time with me. Um, yeah. If you're on YouTube, thumbs up. It really helps um, with people viewing the podcast. Don't underestimate how much clicking that one little button can really help. Um, leave a comment. I'm hoping to have more time to get back to comments and stuff in the coming um, weeks. And I'm hoping to track back through some of the comments that I've had over the last few months. And uh, just generally be a bit more kind of present, which would be quite nice. Um, right. I'm going to stop wittering, smelling sheep and springing yarn. And I shall see you next month for episode 35. When I'll have crocheted socks to show you and all sorts of stuff good stuff. Right. See you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, so sheepy. random here today answers on a postcard feels random ready hello and welcome to the crochet circle podcast episode 34 which is called Sock Season. Cause... Hello and welcome to the Crochet Circle podcast, episode 34, Sock Season. <laughs> How are you all doing? I hope you're well. I hope your August was fabulous. Um, mine was. I've had lots and lots going on and it's just been, it's been loads of fun. Fairly hectic, but really good fun. Um, so yeah, I hope your, your August month has been fantastic too. Um... Third time's the charm. Hello and welcome to the Crochet Circle podcast. This is episode 34. It's called Sock Season. My name is Faye and this is my monthly podcast and it's all about crochet with a little bit of knitting on the side. Um, I do this podcast on a monthly basis. comes out on the first Friday of every month and uh, yeah. <laughs> no, fourth time the charm. And you can get the show notes at the Crochet Circle Podcast dot podbean dot com. Let me just double check what the show notes are at. The I think that's enough detail for now. <laughs> Basically, the bits you need to know. Yes, there's a blog hop. Um, yes, it's going to start on the 28th. Now, I'm saying 28th and it might be the 29th. <sighs> do I have to do all of that again? Yes. It's the sort. Oh, that's so frustrating. So I will be ripping back this slip scratch. <laughs> Maybe I need coffee. Oh, my darling.
Thank <laughs> you. 